Hello friends! People have been domesticating animals since the ancient times, animals like horses, goats, pigs and cows, as well as many others. So what if these animals were to be released into the wild? What would happen to them? Would they survive? And how would their behavior change? Sure, no one would do that on purpose, but there's one place on earth where, by the will of fate, it did happen. There are also rumors that real mutants live there as well. Our stories about the animals that live in a place where a terrible tragedy for humanity and all living things occurred. The accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Ukraine, which happened in 1986, is regarded as the largest of its kind in the entire history of nuclear energy. Unlike the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the explosion resembled a very powerful, dirty bomb. The main damaging factor was its radioactive contamination. The cloud from the burning reactor carried various radioactive materials across most of Europe. After the explosion, all people were evacuated and a 30-kilometer exclusion zone was created. Today, its surface is an open radioactive source. Many animals died immediately after the disaster as they interacted with highly irradiated objects, such as the debris of the fourth power plant, which scattered several kilometers from the explosion site, along with the radioactive dust. The forest near the CHNPP was also affected by radiation. It got named the Red Forest because under the influence of radiation, the pine needles changed their color from green to rusty within 30 minutes after the accident. During the post-accident decontamination, the affected trees were pulled out by bulldozers and buried. But there's still a strongly increased background radiation in some areas. However, a number of scientists note that 30 years after the accident, in the absence of people, the exclusion zone has become a kind of reserve in which rare species of animals live. At the same time, there are sources that claim that mutations have been seen in animals living there. For example, they mention the catfish living right next to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. They inhabit the waters of the CHNPP cooling pond and the diversion canal. Some of them were about 5 meters long. Rumors spread that these catfish were mutants, but is it so? After the Chernobyl accident, scientists and dosimetrists fished in the ponds and the rivers of the zone. The fish was very radioactive, especially those that lived in the silt and fed on other fish. Many years have passed since the disaster, but huge catfish continued to live near the Chernobyl NPP. They also have an accumulation of radionuclides inside them, so it's forbidden to catch them unless it's for science. These catfish have grown so big not because of radiation, but because they're left alone and thus get to live a long time and reach these enormous sizes by the end of their life. Moreover, they're also fed well. The thing is that these smart fish live in the Chernobyl Diversion Canal, which is located between the dining room and the working part of the nuclear power plant. All station workers love to feed the fish. Most of all, the Chernobyl catfish loved sausage and boiled meat. So the catfish in Chernobyl are not mutants. They're just so smart that they can even be hand-fed. After the Chernobyl disaster, a number of scientists expected to see a boom in mutation in nature. Radiation causes many diseases, but an increase in the birth rate of mutants hasn't been observed. The only thing that showed signs of mutation is a few trees in the Red Forest, but ordinary people wouldn't even be able to notice it. Today, the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl NPP is gradually turning into a reserve for wild animals. It is now a unique area where most of the territory is covered with dense vegetation and inhabited by hundreds of animal species, including those listed in the Red Book. Here you can find foxes, 
wolves, deer, hares, wild boar, and many other species. In local swamps and dense forest thickets, rare endangered species of birds found their home. Eagle, owl, black stork, white-tailed eagle, lynxes, badgers, and otters listed in the Red Book found refuge in the Chernobyl rivers far from people. Scientists noted that the exclusion zone had favorable conditions for wild animals and brought over Pshavalsky's horses in 1998 from the Ascania Nova Biosphere Reserve. The Pshavalsky's horse is the last species of wild horses on the planet. They were exterminated by humans in their natural environment in the 12th century and are listed in the International Red Book with on the brink of extinction conservation status. It was the only wild population of Pshavalsky's horses, which at the time had 20 individuals. The conditions of the exclusion zone had a positive effect on the horses, and they have already increased their initial population numbers by several times. Today, Pshavalsky's horses of the exclusion zone is one of the most interesting objects for research, which scientists always keep their eye on. But unfortunately, the exclusion zone doesn't save the animals from their main enemies, poachers. Horses also fall victim to them once in a while. For example, in early December 2019, unknown persons installed trap loops made of metal cable, which a fowl and an adult horse got caught in and suffocated. Overall, Pshavalsky's horses successfully settled in Chernobyl and thus, there are some important lessons to be learned from this. It proves that in the absence of people, Chernobyl became a haven for wild animals. This fact should make us think about the impact of human activities on natural ecosystems. When there are no people around, the fauna thrives even in conditions of radioactive contamination. As noted by the BBC, in 2014, scientists placed 42 motion-activated video cameras in the contaminated areas. Subsequently, they noted that some deviations in the health of animals are still observed, albinos are more common among birds, the life expectancy of animals has somewhat decreased, and rodents have less offspring. However, the high background radiation doesn't seem to have a detrimental effect on the flora and fauna. It seems that in the medium term, the presence of people and the products of their vital activities have a much more negative effect on wildlife than a nuclear disaster. The BBC quotes the Spanish biologist Herman Orizaul. But animals aren't the only ones who live in Chernobyl. Over a thousand people live there as well. These are the power plant employees, shift workers, and scientists. There are also self-settlers living in the exclusion zone. People who refuse to leave the contaminated territory and their homes. As of 2017, there were 84 people living in the zone. They are usually elderly people that live in abandoned villages of about 10 people. However, there are also people who live alone. So what did the scientists find in Chernobyl that surprised them so much? It was a herd of wild cattle. But where did they come from? As it turned out, it was the cows left behind after the death of the self-settlers. They became wild and adapted well to the new living conditions. All animals are in good condition. The cattle handle the snowy and frosty weather well, says the Chernobyl Radiation and Ecological Biosphere Reserve on its Facebook page. Scientists say that this herd differs from domestic cows and that it is structured, has integrity, and always works in harmony. Besides, wild animals are more careful about guarding their young, and the calves themselves choose the safest place in the herd, between the adult bull and the cows. According to the researchers, the young are also well adapted to living in the wild. So it seems that the animals really don't need people at all. On the contrary, they feel great without us. And that's it for today, friends. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.